So let's get started. Writing a digital marketing plan, a template tutorial. If you don't know who I am, some of you um, have been following me online or been a part of our grow session. You have probably heard this before, but I have been an entrepreneur for a lot of years. Um, started my first business at 19, built a business plan, actually developed the business according to that plan. 20 years later, I sold it. Worked for tech startups, corporate sales, um, PR is my background for education and business management. And then also um, worked with the city of Mississauga for a while, helping their entrepreneurs and helping them build their digital footprint. And then left a couple of years later from the city job to start another business with my partner, acornstudio.marketing, because realizing there is a real need to support entrepreneurs when they get started, um, who have a limited budget and really want to tell their story. So that's really where we are right now. Please do feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions or want to talk and follow me on LinkedIn. That's kind of my channel of preference. And so this is what we stand for really at at Acorn, our big thing is to help entrepreneurs build your brand on any budget. And that really does mean any budget, even starting at zero. So if you have any questions about what we do, check out um, our website as well as feel free to book a call with me. There's a QR code there that, um, that will do that and I will be happy to chat. Um, some of the things we're part of our services is this digital marketing planning services. And what you'll have today is absolutely zero budget. Anyone will be able to see this recording afterwards. Um, we also have the guide and template of which we're going to go through the tutorial that can be downloaded. And coming up next year, starting in February, is a boot camp style five week course group setting. If you want to go through this digital marketing plan together with other people, um, please do sign up. And then some people are busy, their business is growing, they have a little bit more budget and they need some one-on-one -on -one time though to go through the plan. If you want to do that, we do have that. We take you through five weeks at your on your schedule and we will do that. And then there's others that are just really busy or they have a marketing team and they want full support and we can help you there. So those are all the different things available and we can talk more about that at the end. And this is it. This is what we're going to go through today. It's a very basic digital marketing plan. You can print it out. It's on Google Docs um, as well as um, it's an editable version. So you can create your own plan. And when you do download it, you'll have a sample company. Many of you know that we use Garden Grows as our example company. And this is the digital marketing plan. So you will see an example going through it as well as have this recording um, for the download. So let's get started. Whoop. Here's some other things. It's part of it. And you're going to see that as we get into it. So let's get started with understanding why we even want to invest or why we should invest in a digital marketing plan. Well, it's a roadmap, right? Guiding you as an entrepreneur through all of the intricacies of this online world that we find ourselves in. Channels, platforms, tactics, whatever is available to help promote your products and services. So, but it's more than just a collection of tactics, right? It's a strategic blueprint that helps you align your marketing efforts with your business goals to make sure that you are targeting the right people, that your approach is impactful and you are engaging with your audience. So to enhance a well-structured digital marketing plan, it's a catalyst that propels your business forward from getting started where nobody knows about who you are to prominence in this digital world we live in. So ultimately, it empowers you, the entrepreneur, to navigate the complexities of this online landscape, seize the opportunities, and stay ahead of your competition. And this is your checklist. These are the sections that are recommended to have in your digital marketing plan. And we're going to go all the way through them, and by the end, you will have them marked off. So executive summary. It's really just a summary of everything and do it at the end is what I would say. Um, you might want to start to make notes throughout it, but really put down some initial notes, but finish it at the end because it will be a summary. So why are you doing this plan? What do you want to accomplish? 
key milestones, review dates, who's going to be part of the project, your budget total so you have eyes on that at all times, and possible risks and assumptions. So why? Because it serves as that quick reference point for you, the key stakeholder, or any marketing team or any employees that you do bring on, it gives you that high level understanding. But keep it brief and focus on the plan's most critical aspects, mostly your, your goals, your strategies, and those anticipated outcomes. So this section is the business planning session section. And it starts out with that situational analysis. This is where you go into more about the purpose and why and the landscape that you are presented with for this particular plan. So remember that this digital marketing plan can be used for your annual plan. And it's a great time in during this recording. It's the end of the year. So it's like it's very timely as we go into that calendar year. But really at any point that you need to do this, do it. The same template can also be used for campaigns. So if you have your whole year and all of a sudden you have something seasonal coming up or you want to do something quarterly, just take the same sections and then do a micro section within it. So always make sure, though, that that campaign rolls up to your overall annual campaign, which rolls up to your strategy. So what the background or situational analysis is, it's a critical section of the plan. It provides a comprehensive, comprehensive overview of the current marketing landscape, industry trends, and the business environment for which your company operates. It involves an in-depth examination of internal and external factors that may impact the success of this digital marketing plan. And why do we do it? To make sure that we actually understand the context, right, of which we operate. And it gives us a, a, a wide range of, of how we fit into all of this. And you'll see the sections as we come out and it expands upon this. Some of the key considerations that I like to use is I use an acronym called PESTL, P-E-S-T-L-E. It's political, environmental, social, technology, legal, and economic. That's sort of that external piece. And then consider your internal. And we're going to get into that when we talk about our SWOT. But just put a big situation on why you're doing this in the first place. So that's the background. And then you want to highlight some things about your company. So this section gives you information about your business, your mission, vision, values, and your, your value your positioning statement, but your unique selling propositions. So really what's setting you apart. And that will be something you're going to come back to. So all of these sections are quick references, right? So it helps you set the stage for your digital marketing plan by providing context about your company, right? This is really why we're doing this and the purpose. Really, really emphasize who you are as an organization and what you want to accomplish well, actually, who you are as an organization and what sets you apart. So that's the summary of this section. And then do put in about the team. Sometimes people don't put something like this in. I like this section because I want to know who's responsible and who's going to be involved. And it will give you context when you get to the budget section on who's going to be doing what. So that can be internal roles and external roles. So if it's you, obviously, if you're just getting started, you're going to do a bulk of it. But you may be working with a marketing consultant or you may have an intern that's coming in to help you. Just put it down there as quick reference, their name and their contact information as well. And then brand strategy. This is definitely part of your business planning process. You've all done it. On some level, you understand who you are as a brand, but now we get to put down the details. Um, we do a lot of that brand strategy piece here at Acorn, but a lot of this stuff, you you know yourself or you have done it elsewhere. Now, and it's all, sometimes it's all over the place, right? Take it, bring it together and put it in this one central place. And what this has is the list here. It's got your brand promise. If you have a slogan or tagline, maybe you do, maybe you don't. If you have it, put it in. Um, your style and tone of your brand, key messaging, keywords, phrases, what's your visual identity. So if you have a brand guide, you would want to put a link here to it. And that brand guide might be on Canva. It might be in your drive. Just make sure there's a quick reference link because this plan is going to be your central operating plan, right? 
Um, and that is a piece um, that you want to, to have in one section. So that's all your brand strategy section. Competitive analysis, of course, we have to know who our competitors are. We don't always have to be looking at them and paying attention to them, but when you initially do your plan, put in who the key competitors are at this moment for this plan. And it will I help you identify opportunities and threats um, and refine your strategy because you're going to know who's out there, what they're doing well, what kind of gaps and what kind of opportunities you have, right? So it's company name, how are they your competitors, and how your company differentiates them, yourself from them. If you put that all down there in a, in a quick, succinct way, it will give you a quick reference. Now we get into a SWOT. So a SWOT stands for strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Quite often you will do that in your real business plan, right? Like I say, real business plan, but the big business strategy, right? It's for your whole business. What we're talking about here is marketing. So what are the strengths you have for what, doing this marketing? How will it help you be successful? So maybe you have skills. Maybe you have an internal team, maybe you have some, your retail business, one of your front staff actually um, has great social media skills. That's a strength and that's an internal strength. Weaknesses could be, oh, I have limited budget. I might, um, I don't have time, whatever that might be in, um, from a marketing perspective. Opportunities are, you've identified maybe Instagram. I'm not even on it. What if I get on it? That's a huge opportunity for us, right? Like to go out and do that. Threats could be new competitors. Threats could be the economy. Threats could be a supply, supply chain problem, whatever that might be. Just right now, do a, and when you do your plan, do a quick scan of everything externally and internally and just put some key points down. And then we get into the bigger next big section, and that's your target audiences. Really important to understand who you are targeting. So if it is your annual plan that we're working on, you want to make sure you have your primary and your secondary audiences identified. Go through that age, gender. Some of the sections might not be as important um, as others, and you may leave some blank, but I do encourage you to try and fill out each section. So your primary audience is the one, it's usually your ideal client, but it is that primary person. The secondary either supports it or it's an upcoming audience that you might be uh, considering. So put all the stuff down, your typical personality types, even income and entertainment. Um, values are a really important thing to put down here. Interests, hobbies, anything that's going to help provide you with some insight when we get into doing content or into doing your tactics. Now, if you're using this plan as a campaign, which is like a mini, mini plan, what you're going to do is take that bigger plan and go, okay, so who am I targeting for this particular campaign? And it may become more refined, but it's just really who is the focus on for the plan. So develop detailed buyer personas as well after this. This is an overview, but what I would do recommend is actually creating a persona. Goals and objectives. This section clearly outlines the overall business goals and the specific marketing goals and objectives. So the purpose is to give you that guiding star, right? It's to figure out where you're going for marketing. And when you put your business goals and your marketing goals together, you're going to make sure that they're aligned. So then you're just gonna go, well, that's why I'm doing this. And so when we get into the tactic section, you're going to know the purpose for it and you're gonna make sure everything lines up. So goals are usually broad, and you're going to have typically in the section we allow for primary and secondary. You might have multiple goals. Just remember the more goals you have, the more you have to build out underneath. So keep it as, as specific as possible, but sometimes you might need more. And then make sure you have a date. So smart, keep them smart, specific, measurable, achievable, time bound and relevant. I switch those around, relevant and time bound if we're going to keep it into the SMART acronym. So when you get into the marketing, that's when you get into the details, right? So there is the, um, it will follow the stages of the marketing funnel. 
we have various things that we've worked on for goals and objectives. Uh, we have lots of blogs and extra resources. Goals and objectives are one of the hardest things to actually get focused on, but please don't go past this and start getting into the other stuff until you're clear on your goals and objectives, because everything else is going to actually have to roll up to this. Now you may tweak them, but do spend some time um, identifying where they are in the funnel and what you want to achieve and when. And then we get into the marketing mix. If you're just getting started, this is um, this might be new to you and you have to evaluate what channels you're going to use, what kind of, um, how are you going, it's basically the methods of which you're going to communicate. So that we put mix and channels because sometimes they're not channels, sometimes it's it's um, a thing like a, a trade show specifically that you're going to go to an event. Um, social media would be considered a channel. So there'll be different categories. Within that, there'll be the subcategories. And then in this section, you want to identify the strategy. So for example, social media is going to be a category. And then you're going to talk about how you're going to use social media generally within that category. And then you're going to get specific in the tactics. So if you have Facebook, you're going to say, well, how am I going to use Facebook? Because each channel has its own strategy. I do encourage you to spend a little bit of time, put a few sentences down so that you do know how you're going to do it. And that will get, keep you focused as you build out your tactics. And then you need content for your channels. And we always start with those five pillars. Now, these are ones that are typical and broad across the, the board, education, inspiration, about us, community as in general community of what you're doing out in the community and how you're going to engage your community. And then you have a piece on promotion. Now, it might be a little bit different for your business, but it is a good starting point. And why? Is content so important? It continues to be one of the most important things for bringing in leads and building your brand. Um, and you want to make sure that whatever you do for content, and this is why we do it in the plan, and that it aligns with your brand and it resonates with your audience and it supports your overall marketing goals. So that's really why we want to put that into this section, into this plan. So focus on creating value content that addresses audience needs and is consistent with your brand messaging. We have in the plan, in the template, a section under each of these um, pillars, a place for primary audience and then secondary audience, because you might want different content for each and having eyes on both of them at one time and beside each other is good because you might go, okay, I can actually do this and it hits both audiences. So have it part of your plan. And then we get into the plan, which is actually um, tactics, activities, timelines, and budgets. This, the purpose of this is to make sure your implementation roadmap is clear and that you are going to um, reach your deadlines, you know everything that works together, and you can start allocating who's going to do what and when. So budget is an important one, what channels you're going to use, the tactics, um, and who the audience is. So the first part of the template has um, key dates and descriptions. Those are the high levels for your business. So if you're seasonal, and you're coming up to the holiday season, and it's a big one for you, please do put down that date. Um, in my world of when I had the bike shop, our big dates were March break. As soon as the, the snow went and everyone just came in, they pulled out their bikes, we had to be ready to service those bikes. And so we had to do a lot of promotional stuff and things ahead of time to make sure we were ready for those very enthusiastic cyclists in the, in the earliest part of the spring. So that was a key date for us. So please do put down a key date and what the description is. There is a section there for management notes, and then we get down to the timeline. So the timeline has um, categories. So brand core marketing is something all of you should be doing all the time. And then under that, what are you doing? What are those key tactics? PMR is the next column. PMR stands for person most responsible. Who's that person that's going to lead the charge? Because if you're talking about you doing stuff yourself or hiring someone, you may want to um, itemize that. How much budget, how much time, and then your timeline. 
So I have there some months, but you might want to bring it, break it down into weeks. And then it kind of looks almost like a Gantt chart. And then other things could be like your influencer strategy would be one. Maybe you have a key campaign uh, event coming up and you want to do that and you want to list all the items underneath. So what we do normally is this could be part of your planning, um, but we then use it as Santa. So you're going to take what you do from a plan. The next step for implementation is going to be put it into some level of task management. So whether you plan this in your task management profile, I do suggest keeping it sort of within a document at least high level. And then we want to make sure we track performance, right? So this is your evaluation methods and metrics. This area defines those KPIs, those key performance indicators and metrics used to measure the success of this plan, right? It enables you to have ongoing assessment. What are those indicators that you are on track? Because we know with plans like this, they have to be agile and we have to constantly be changing. And I say constantly, constantly reviewing, evaluating, doing it, learning and adapting. So big things like goals and objectives probably aren't going to change a lot, but you might find that there's an opportunity to do a new event and it just came up. You want to be able to take this plan and you're going to look at it and you're going to maybe add in this campaign. So now you can be more flexible. You can be more agile. You can look for these opportunities and you can engage in them because you have a plan and you can see how it will fit. So that is where that flexibility comes in. So basically you have a place for your, your goals. You're going to have your tactics and then you're going to have those key metrics that you're going to, to, um, to focus on, and then you're going to have where you're going to get the information. So for website traffic, say website's one of your key key um, channels and key tactics, you're going to think about traffic, new, you, new visitors, returning visitors, um, and then you're going to also have, um, where are you going to get that? Google Analytics, right? Or maybe it's your Squarespace analytics. And this will give you um, a chance to look at this and go, okay, I see the big picture. Now I'm going to put this into a planning and I'm going to make sure I track these consistently because truth is in the trends, right? And proof is in the patterns, as I'm sure somebody else has said. But that is really what we want to do. So we do want to make sure we consistently track things. Here it is. This is what it is. So you have the goals and objectives and you have your tactics you have your metrics and your methods. And then one little section at the very end is your appendices. So I always like to have a quick link area so that if I have other supporting documents within this one central one, I know I can click over at any time. So just like we had the brand guide up at the top, we would have, um, and a quick link over, you may have um, your playbook which is a more extended management system that we have on our downloads as well. Um, you might have the guide for helping for doing this to as a quick reference on, on what we should be doing for each section. And you may have various blogs on this as well. Um, numerous things, whatever that might be, even your business plan is probably one I would put in here as well. And just to, it'll help you keep it handy. And that's it. That is your checklist from your executive summary. Don't forget to go back to your executive summary and make sure after you finish it that it's all there and, um, and check it off. Now, what's going to probably happen is you're going to do the best you can and you're going to get it all done or at least the best you can get done. And you might do, it's like over a period of time and come back to it. So do place um, key milestones for reviewing your plan and for making sure it's updated because we're always getting more information. And that's it. So just a reminder, the download for this guide and templates available on our website. We do have the five week course coming up and it'll be various times throughout the year. And then one on one consultations. And if you want custom services, uh, just reach out to me and uh, let me know 